Welcome to the world of probiotic foods. This is Cultured Food Life with your host, Donna Schwenk. Welcome, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. And we're going to be talking about probiotic foods versus supplements, probiotic supplements. And if you're anything like me, you spend a lot of money on probiotic supplements. And so many people are wondering if these probiotic pills provide the same benefits as probiotic foods, uh, since they seem to be kind of marketed in the same way. You know, they're, they're both healthy bacteria for our guts, but there's a big difference that most people don't, aren't aware of. And probiotic foods work significantly better because of their construction than um, probiotic supplements or probiotic pills. Um, to get into the small intestine and colon, where they do the work of breaking down and processing food, empowering up the immune system, the bacteria first has to move through the stomach. And the stomach is filled with acid, and that acid is put there for a reason, because it's designed to kill bacteria. And um, when you, whenever you eat something, it has to pass through the stomach first, and this kind of gives you a barrier to harmful bacteria. So when you eat a probiotic food, that food itself provides a protective halo that helps shield the friendly bacteria, and it also speeds the transport out of the stomach um, it also does that real fast, fastly, or fast, and it um, keeps that good bacteria intact. Well, what happens when you take a pill, you know, a, a probiotic pill, it often gets trapped in the acids of the stomach. It kind of just lays there, and the probiotics are killed before the body ever gets a chance to use them. So consuming probiotic foods, such as kefir or kombucha or cultured vegetables, is a much more effective way than taking supplements. Uh, Dr. Mercola from uh, Mercola.com stated, fermented foods not only give you a wide variety of beneficial bacteria, they also give you uh, far more of them, so it's a much more cost-effective alternative. And here's a case in point. It's unusual to find a probiotic supplement containing more than 10 billion colony-forming units. But when my team actually tested fermented vegetables produced by the probiotic starter cultures, they had 10 trillion colony forming units of bacteria. So literally one serving of vegetables equal to an entire bottle of high potency probiotics. So clearly you are far better off using fermented foods than supplements. Um, it's really interesting to me because for many years before I started eating uh, cultured foods, I was taking a lot of probiotic supplements, and it really, I really didn't notice any benefits. And um, it wasn't too long after that that somebody said that I needed to take like triple or quadruple the amount that I was taking of supplements to even get them to work, because the stomach acids were killing were killing the bacteria before it could ever get to what I needed. So if I took a lot of them, um, that it would it would work more effectively. And I did try that, but I really didn't see very many benefits from it. And it was really expensive. And I was taking so many that um, I think that it does help sometimes. I really do think that you can find benefits, but I think you have to take a lot of them so that they can get to the parts of the body that are needed. But when you have cultured foods, for instance, kefir. Kefir is a fermented milk product, and it also can be non-dairy. Um, but kefir is, uh, it contains billions of bacteria. And I was really shocked to find how different I felt when I switched from probiotic supplements to kefir. And I mean, I felt it immediately. I noticed it within a day, that something wasn't happen happening inside of me. And in less than a month, I was... Uh, my blood pressure had normalized, my uh, blood sugar had normalized, my diabetes was go going away, and I was really convinced that these, this food had done something pretty dramatic to my body in a very short amount of time. So I began to tell my friends about it, and I watched as person after person with different ailments, things that I didn't even know that Kiefer could help, got better from just about everything I could imagine if it wasn't at first it was asthma, then it was food allergies, joint pain, um, acid reflex. I mean, re I mean, it was 
it was amazing to me all the different things that were happening uh, to people and things that I didn't even think it would help um, was it was pretty amazing. And from that day to this, been about 17 years, it has been an absolutely amazing journey. And kefir and kombucha and culture vegetables and water kefir have all been a big part of that. Kefir, um, the culture that, that makes kefir was discovered uh, hundreds and hundreds of years ago when milk was being transported through the Middle East in warm environments. And um, this was said by Michael Tyson. Uh, he's the managing director of Lata USA, a kefir company based in F- Fairland. And he said, as the milk started fermenting, the kefir grains were discovered. And that's how we got the kefir grains that we have today. And and they've just been around for forever. Very, very long time. Um, they've even been mentioned uh, back in old scrolls, uh, during the time, I think, um, during the time of Moses, during uh, Marco Polo mentioned it in his journals, they've just been around a very, very long time. And it, it's it been helping us make this fermented milk drink with billions of probiotics in it for, you know, as long as I, as long as time can remember. And it's exciting to me to understand that these kefir grains that make this fermented milk cannot be uh, they can't be duplicated by scientists, and they have tried many times, and they can't figure it out. And they're not actually grains at all. They're kind of rubbery uh, colonies of bacteria and yeast, and they kind of look like a little uh, cauliflower. The main polysaccharide in kefir grains is kefirun, which is uh, a heteropolysaccharide composed of equal proportions of glucose and galactose, and it's produced by the many strains of lactobacillus and kefir grains. And kefir has anti-tumor, antifungal, antibacterial properties, and there's quite a bit of research about that, that it can help regulate the immune system in a very powerful way, and it certainly did that for me. It was really interesting, Not a couple years ago I saw that a professor of microbiology at the University of Florida um, loved drinking goat milk's kefir. So he decided to have his class test the kefir he drank. And the kefir that he drank was from Glades Ridge Goat Dairy Farm there in Florida. And his testing showed 10 billion colony forming units per milliliter. And they did more testing, um, was being done on it using different types of milks. And the results came out very similar. And so that is quite impressive. Um, And then there's another official study that may partially confirm these extraordinary high findings. And it comes out of the Department of Microbiology from the Federal University of Larvis. And they sampled 270 different milk kefir grains from all over the world. And the highest CFU probiotic count was from the United States, and then it was followed by Canada. And the U.S. count was 10.43 billion per CFUs. Um, which amounts to about 150 billion per tablespoon or 2.4 trillion per cup. And that number kind of falls in line with the um, professor of, of microbiology at the University of Florida. It kind of is a very similar count that they got. Um, there was another one that they did in Scotland and Poland, and they studied six different types of milk kefir samples from Iraq. And this time they used uh, cow's and sheep's milk as the means of fermentation for this. And they found 1 billion CFU per grams of lactococcus and lactobacilli. And that's a, that was quite a bit less than the other two studies, but it was still about 250 billion per cup. Um, a very respectable number considering, considering that, you know, probiotic pills cost a fortune to buy and you only get about 50 billion. Um, Temperature does affect kefir grains. And one of the things that I noticed uh, recently, too, is that uh, kefir kind of makes its own heat when it ferments. And it generates its own ability to make some warmth in the fermentation process. And people who use heat or live in very warm climates, um, some of their bacteria um, will diminish because it it doesn't like heat at all. It can kill it if it gets up above 100 degrees, but even when it gets closer into the 90s and 80s, it really doesn't like fermenting at those high temperatures. And I have noticed that it does seem to diminish the probiotic count 
and the kefir. So that could perhaps be why, since these foods came from warm climates in Iraq, that it might have diminished some of the kefir and the amount of uh, probiotics within the within this study. Um, but I do think that it's interesting that my kefir in the wintertime is creamier and thicker. It seems to like the colder temps a little bit. Not too cold, but it seems to like the temps uh, like 69, 70, 68. It seems to really like those temperatures and it seems to make really thick, creamy kefir. Um, and kefir grains kind of have a mind of their own. They do their own thing. So Whatever they're doing, I like it, especially I call it winter kefir. That's my favorite time to have uh, to consume kefir is when it's cooler. But in any case, there's no doubt that there's a large amount of bacteria in kefir. And just how much is still being researched, and it's really exciting. I, I had another research paper I was reading today about it, and um, it's pretty profound. Some of the different strains of bacteria, 50 plus different types of bacteria and yeast in it that are so good for our bodies. And, um, you know, it's likely to range from 7 billion, 100 billion to trillions per cup of kefir a day. And you just can't get that anywhere. That's, that's pretty impressive. And even if you were to find supplements that, that could give you those, um, likelihood is they wouldn't survive your stomach acids. Uh, they would be killed. So you wouldn't receive the benefits that you would in kefir. Um, I have an easy kefir powder grain that is made from kefir. It's flash frozen uh, kefir grains that's made into a powder, so it makes it easy for people to make it. They don't have to care for the grains, but like one jar will make, you know, you can make anywhere from a quart to a gallon, and then you can take a portion of that after it's made and then make another quart or another half gallon and a gallon. You can do it again and again, but it's made from kefir grains. And we had that tested, and it came to 3 billion uh, or 50 lactic acid and 50 lactic lactic acid yeast per gram. And so it was typically, you know, a billion active um, uh, per gram or milliliter. So that too is, and actually we, I had that tested. Um, and so that was, that's another great way to get your probiotics. And that's, it's a lot easier than using grains. If you're a busy person and you don't need a lot of kefir, um, the easy kefir powders are really um, easy to make. It, it makes it in 24 hours. You basically just put milk in a jar, put the powder in, shake it, let it sit for 24 hours. The next day you have kefir. You don't have to remove the grains. Um, and you can use like a fourth of a cup from that quart jar to make another gallon, just put more milk in it and it makes it again and again. It works really, really well. And you're going to get billions of beneficial bacteria and yeast. So, you know, and the other thing I love about cultured foods is how inexpensive they are. And you really need to try it for yourself to see how different you feel eating probiotic fields. I mean, if you if you don't believe me, you should try it. Try and see if you feel a difference between taking supplements and taking culture foods because it was an enormous difference for me. And, you know, homemade is always better for you. That's always been my motto. And these foods are no exception. Um, while I believe there are a lot of really good probiotics um, selling in food stores, and I do, I think there's some good ones out there. You just, you just don't know how long they've been sitting on the shelf. Um, you don't know how much food is in the capsules, if they have enough food. For instance, you know, there's just, it's tiny, tiny amounts of bacteria in those capsules and the rest is all food. So they'll stay alive. And I just, I took them for so long that I didn't see, you know, any results for, with my daughter or myself. I was trying to get us all healthy and immediately when I started taking um, cultured foods, I saw a dramatic change. I mean, we actually had a healing crisis when we first started, which is that a lot of pathogens and bad bacteria was dying off because we had flooded our body with a lot of good bacteria. And when you flood your body with a lot of good bacteria, they give off toxins when they die, um, the pathogens and the harmful bacteria is in yeast. And so I noticed, you know, uh, I just noticed like I was going to the bathroom more. I felt kind of a little more gassy, a little more cramping. And I noticed that I was, um, you know, cleaning the house. Basically there was a lot of things inside of me that, uh, were going bye-bye. So, and that was immediate after I started to, and then that kind of subsided and I started to feel great. And I noticed a huge and tremendous difference. 
so in my life and in my health. And not only that, but a lot of the uh, bacteria and yeast in these cultured foods are what they call transient yeast. So they don't survive in the body for long periods of time. And um, for instance, with kombucha, it's a really interesting thing. There's um, a lot of good probiotic yeast in, in kombucha and bacteria. And what they do is it takes about I think it's two to three days to get a steady, steady stream. If you're drinking kombucha every day, you get a steady stream of Saccharomyces boulardii, which is a very strong probiotic in kombucha. And it takes about two to three days to get that stream going. And then what happens is as it's in the body, it will attract pathogens to it. It acts like a pathogen and it steals the metabolites so that they can't survive. Um, and then it, in about five to six days, it exits the body and it takes all those pathogens with it. And it's very effective for killing candida. As long as you're not eating any sugars or grains at the time, it will, you know, attract those um, yeast, especially candida, to it and take it out of the body about day five or six. But it doesn't last in the body forever, and it takes a couple days to get it going. So that's why we have it all the time, because it uh, it takes a little while for it to get going. Now, with milk kefir, there are some transient bacteria, but there's also good, good bacteria and yeast that are permanent residents in your body. I mean, they're, they're making you their host and they will stay around. Some of them can't even be killed by antibiotics, which is powerful. And so they really do make a huge difference. Um, and I can tell if I go for more than a few days without having these cultured foods, I, I feel a difference. I'm more hungry because I'm more satisfied when I eat these foods because they help you to, uh, to get more nutrients from the foods you eat with them. So Let's say you have a glass of kombucha and some cultured vegetables with your sandwich at lunch. You're going to get more nutrients from that sandwich than you otherwise would if you didn't have those foods that are going to help you digest it, get more nutrients from it. So you're going to feel more satisfied. You're going to feel more nourished. Um, you're going to you feel more content. Um, and not only that, you'll also give your immune system a boost when you have enough of the right bacteria in your body, your body um makes armies of bacteria to fight pathogens, to fight viruses, um, alerts your cells to whose, uh, the more bacteria you have, the more of that network inside of your gut is working to alert your body. If there's harmful invaders, if there's viruses that need to be attacked and the more good bacteria you have, the more your body's able to do that. And so basically it's an entire ecosystem in your gut and in your body that is set there to help you, uh, to keep you healthy, to allow you to do the body to do its job by, you know, killing viruses and harmful bacteria and things that normally don't belong in your body. And, um, I like, I like how this works. I mean, a lot of people think that bacteria and yeast all work together, but actually they compete. They compete for, for dominance and whoever has the most is the winner. So, for instance, uh, yeast in your gut, they shoot at each other with like a liquid-like sub substance to kill one another to decide who is going to be dominant and who is going to rule in the gut. It's kind of like a shootout in the old corral. And so they decide, you know, you're going, we're staying, we're dominant. And it's the same with bacteria. Bacteria fights for dominance. And, and if they don't have the numbers, then they don't dominate. And the other bacteria, whether they're good or bad, will take over. And so you want lots of good bacteria in your gut so that it stays in its balance and, and it allows your body to do what it's meant to do. And that's to keep you well. I mean, we are a sack of bacteria walking around. We're hundreds of trillions of, of bacteria and we just don't even know it. We just take a cloud with us wherever we go. I was just in New York and did a class and I was telling everybody, you know, um, everywhere I go, I take my bacteria with me. And I said, and everybody in this room is going to get some today, whether they like it or not, because I take it with me. And so I think it's a force of good in the world. I think that my bacteria keeps me healthy, keeps me strong. I'm not afraid of sickness and disease. When um, I think I've told this story on one of my other podcasts. One time I was on an airplane and uh, there was a woman who had a baby who was sick and I think she had the flu and she was throwing up and she threw up all over her mom and the mom was really distraught. And so I offered to hold the baby for her while she went to the bathroom and cleaned up because she had stuff all over. And when I got off the plane, the stewardesses were like, Oh, thank you so much. And we're just, 
thank you for helping, but we hope you don't get the flu. And I said, I am not afraid of the flu. The flu should be afraid of me because I said, I, I don't worry about that anymore. I mean, when you live like that, you know, the chains fall off. You're not looking around the corner for, you know, am I going to get a cold? Am I going to get this? You know how to keep your body healthy. And I am really good at it because we've become a team. My body is... Um, it's an interesting dynamic that we have. I know how to feed it. I know what to do to keep it well. And I know when I've gotten off track and it lets me know. And the longer I do this, um, the more, how do I say this? The more it is alerts me when I'm off course. It, um, I get bigger symptoms of things like, uh, you know, once you clean out the stuff in your diet that's not good for you, if you ever try to put it back in, you get a flare up of something. It will let you know it doesn't like it because it likes, it likes to keep you healthy and it doesn't want you to do that. And, um, it, I've noticed that too, is that, you know, I, I don't eat those things anymore because I don't want the repercussions from them. And I like feeling the way I'm feeling. I like being happy and feeling, you know, a sense of well being all the time and being able to do, I have like the energy I have. I like being able to do all the things that I do. And if I didn't eat this way, I don't have this energy. I don't feel this way. I don't feel the joy that I feel. I don't have the, I don't know. I don't have the compassion for my brothers and sisters that I do when I feel good. When you're unhealthy, you're so focused in on yourself when you're sick and you've got problems. It, you're just always you know, worried about yourself. It's hard to, to do things for others because you, you're you just getting through your day. And that's the way my life used to be. You know, but when I, I started to see my health problems vanish, start to go one by one. And I remember all the money I spent on those probiotic pills. And then I realized that just eating these foods was accomplishing more than I could have asked for. I, I felt such a sense of gratefulness and such a sense of well-being that I never looked back and nobody could convince me otherwise. But what I didn't know is all the things it would do for other people and how it would help other people. And I didn't know all the health ailments that bacteria um, would help with. I mean, I had a lady in my class this weekend and she was telling me about, I, I think it was her husband or her uncle or her dad. I can't remember who it was, but he... Um, he was having problems with kidney function and it was going down, down, down. And when he started drinking kefir, it's gone up, up and up. And then I got another email and she said it's even gotten better. And I have probably gotten, I would say, seven or eight different emails about people's kidney function improving. And I did a lot of research on it and found that, you know, the bacteria eats out that toxic debris and the urea that causes kidneys to struggle and, um, you know, not function at their proper level. And I've seen this again and again. And never, I never knew that for many years, what was happening until the research came out. And I had another lady whose dog almost died um, from kidney problems and Kiefer turned him around. And I've seen this with humans. I've seen it with so many people. And I just, what I love about it is that it's just food. It's just food that's making us and keeping us well something you can put in your refrigerator, something that's delicious. I have it every morning. I kind of got a new thing right now I'm doing. I make these smoothie bowls where I put a lot of frozen fruit. I love berries. Put frozen fruit in my kefir, and then I blend it, whirl it all up in a blender so it's super thick and almost like ice cream. And then I top it with bee pollen. I'm loving the bee pollen because this is uh, the allergy season out here, and I love bee pollen. I think it always helps boost my immune system a little bit. And then I put some to other toppings on it and a cup of coffee. And that's my breakfast every morning. And I cannot wait to get out of bed to have this. It's, it's fast food made easy for me. And, uh, you know, my little Holly this morning was like, mom, I, I need some smoothie. I need a, she was wanting a smoothie bowl this morning, but she wanted, uh, one of her favorite versions. And she takes, um, if you have to go take a look at this, I've got a video on YouTube and I've got a recipe on my website it's called Coco Kefir Crunch. And basically it's a, a smoothie she makes, a chocolate smoothie she loves. And then she makes this topping out of millet, which is just like two or three ingredients and it gets all crunchy. And it's, it's, it's one of her favorite breakfasts. And I actually made a video about it. So you'll have to check that out or go to my website. I think it's called Coco Kefir Crunch. 
and uh, you'll have to give that a try. Uh, but these foods are so delicious, guys, and they're easy to make. They're um, fast. They're on-the-go type foods. Uh, and they have made my life a joy because I can't wait to have them in the morning. I enjoy them. They're fast and easy to make, and they supply me with billions upon trillions of good bacteria and yeast that have kept me well for many, many years. I believe it's 17 years now that I've been doing this. So when somebody has something that um, they believe in, that they've experienced and that they live by. Um, it's hard to not just tell everybody about it. And I believe that when you do that, when you live something and you believe it, the people who are looking for you will find you. The people who are seeking the answers that you have sought yourself and found will find you. So if you're listening today, I hope that's the case for you. I hope I can encourage you. I have lots of recipes on my website for all these foods. It's all free. Lots of information, videos, I've got books, I've got a membership site, I've got hundreds of uh, free recipes, but everything you need to get started is free. And if you go to my website at Culture Food Life, at the top you'll see the bar and you'll see a little smiley pot that says start here. If you punch that down, it shows you how to make all these foods for free um, and shows you some recipes and uh, everything you need uh, to do it. And guys, all you really need is a culture. And then if you're making kefir, you need milk or non-dairy milk, whichever one you want to make. And I got recipes for those. If you're making water kefir, you just need the culture and then some water and then something to feed the culture. And for vegetables, you just need a culture and you need some vegetables. In kapucha, it's just tea and sugar and the culture. And then the sugars get eaten out by the culture and it makes it into probiotics. And you are on your way to becoming um, trillions of more bacteria that you need that keeps you well. So I hope that helps you. I hope that it will save you money. I hope that you'll get these cultures and share them with your friends and family. And uh, once you get a culture, it'll last your lifetime if you take care of it. And don't tell me if you kill it, because I hate that when people kill their cultures, because I've had mine for a very long time. I've had my kombucha and my kiva grains and for just 17 years. They work great. Uh, my sourdough culture, water kiva, all of them, you know, this is very economical, which I love. I mean, you don't have to keep buying it over and over again, uh, but you're going to buy foods anyway. So why not make your own? Why not make your own probiotics? They're stronger, they're better for you, they're less expensive, and you can share them with your friends and family. And it's sustaining. It's a, it's a, I think it's a perfect design, and I love these foods. So I hope that helps you. Thank you guys for listening in this week. Um, I hope it encourages you, inspire you to just maybe give it a try. Go try some at the store. They sell them at the health food store too. Give it a whirl, see if you like them. And if you so inclined, come back to my website, and I'll teach you how to make them. Uh, I got all the information there and we're here to help you if you need it. So have a great week and we will see you next week.